If you ask what determines the Earth's climate, clearly the main, the main thing that determines it is uh, sunlight. Sunlight is what heats the Earth. Uh, not all the light that uh, arrives at the Earth from the sun goes to heating the Earth. Some of it is reflected back. It's just the, uh, the part that is absorbed. Uh, and what happens is there's a certain rate at which sunlight is absorbed by the Earth's surface, and there's a certain rate at which the Earth's surface radiates to space. What comes from the sun is in the ordinary visible part of the spectrum that our eyes are sensitive to. What the Earth radiates into space is in the infrared part of the spectrum, longer waves than red, that our eyes are not sensitive to, but it's as legitimate, <coughs> excuse me, a, a form of light as the kind that we're, that we're uh, used to. Now, if you calculate what the temperature of the Earth ought to be from how much sunlight is being absorbed, uh, equaling how much infrared radiation would be radiated to space, you find that the Earth's temperature, by this simple calculation, is too low. It's about 30 centigrade degrees too low. And uh, why is it too low? It's too low because something was left out of the calculation. What was left out of the calculation? The greenhouse effect. Uh, the air between us is transparent, except in Los Angeles and places of that sort, uh, in the ordinary visible part of the spectrum. We can see each other. But if our eyes were sensitive at, say, 15 microns in the infrared, we could not see each other. The air would be black uh, between us, and that's because, in this case, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is very strongly absorbing uh, at 15 microns and other wavelengths in the infrared. Likewise, there are parts of the infrared spectrum where water vapor absorbs, where we could not see each other if, uh, if we were only as far apart as we are in this room. If you add these infrared absorbing gases to a planetary uh, to a planet, then what happens is the sunlight comes in as before, but when the surface tries to radiate the space in the infrared, it is blocked, it is impeded by the absorbing gases. And so the surface temperature has to rise so that there is an equilibrium between what comes in and what goes out. So this is uh, the greenhouse effect. It is a misnomer for more reasons than one. It's a misnomer in particular because that's not how the florist greenhouse works, but that's a very minor point. Um, there are other gases which absorb in the infrared, uh, all of, uh, many of which have been mentioned already, nitrous oxide, methane, the uh, halo carbons, and these are uh, products uh, partly of uh, um, agriculture, it's fertilizers, um, refrigeration, um, aerosol spray cans, and so on, all products of our technology. We don't generate much water into the atmosphere, but we certainly do generate a great deal of carbon dioxide through the burning of wood and uh, fossil fuels and apparently uh, benign uh, activity. Who could object to uh, humans burning oil 